Hi, my name is Martin Carney. I played football for Castlebar Mitchells in the 1980s. And I served for a period of five years as club secretary during the 1990s. This year, 2010, is a special year in the club's history as it commemorates the 125th anniversary of the foundation of the club. The club, and indeed the people who have served the club with distinction, have bequeathed a wonderful legacy uh, to the young of the town. And I suppose the challenge for the young people is to maintain and to emulate the traditions and achievements of the past. So I'm inviting you here tonight to share in the celebration of the 125th anniversary of the foundation of the club and to enjoy some of the special moments and events that occurred during this landmark year in the club's history. In February 2010, news regarding the planning and coordination of events was communicated to club members at a press conference in Unsportlan. An outline of the scale of events and possible timetable anticipated bore testimony to the hard work of the organising committee. The conference was chaired by Mick Byrne. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, can I first welcome you to this, the launch of a programme of celebrations mar marking the 125th anniversary of Castlebar Mitchells. In his introduction, McBurn referred to the foundation, the development, the history and the contribution of Castlebar Mitchells to the GAA. I always love to hear the old stories. People talk about the Shruffon Six, the backbone of that famous Mayor team in 1936 when we first won our All Ireland title. Men like Burke, Kenny, Flannery, Quinn, Mochler and McGowan. Later to be joined in the 40s by men like Byrne, Flanagan, Mongi, and Solon. All greats, people who have represented their club and their county with great pride. And there were many more, there were many more that distinguished themselves at club level. And they broke all kinds of records in the 50s. And one of them is here, two away from my left, the, the great Patsy Harpin holder of nine county medals. But there were other people there as well at that time. The likes of Ainsworth, Munley, Harkin, Flynn, Foy, Ruan, Quigley, to name but a few. A broad representation of the community was present for the launch. Among those in attendance were the local councillors, members of the media, players, parents and mentors. At the top table, were Jerry Henry, Mayo Delegate to the Central Council of the GAA, Mike Little Coyne, Mayor of Castlebar, Finian Joyce, Club Secretary, Michael Diskin, Club Chairman, and Patsy Horkin, a former chairman and stalwart of the club. I suppose on an occasion like this, I think we have to draw inspiration from all of the people that preceded us in, in, in the club, and Mick mentioned many of them, many of them who regrettably I just know them by virtue of their tremendous contribution. But I think we also look forward to the next 125 years. And we look forward confidently into the, well, the, the, the near term. Michael Diskin gave a personal outline of his links with Castlebar since 1966 and about his involvement with the Mitchells since the mid-1980s. He thanked the organising committee in particular Finney and Joyce, for their work, and acknowledge the contribution of the County Board, FOSS, club sponsors, Connacht Council and the National Lottery in the development of McHill Park and its environs. He spoke of the contribution of Tony McHugh, who presented a framed picture of John Mitchell to the club. He praised the work of McRuan and others, who devoted huge time to the growth of the Mitchells. He urged the young to stay with the Mitchells and contribute to its future. Michael then introduced Patsy Horkin, who was part of the all-conquering Mitchells team of the 50s and who is a winner of nine senior county titles. McHale Park was purchased from the Beckett sisters, who live now at where Simsons live, where the houses are built there just off Spencer Street. That was Beckett's. Beckett's the one on this land here. And the Mitchells purchased it at that time for the 
princely sum of 630 pounds, and that, that was money at the times. Um, the first game that was played there was Mio versus Kildare. And that was on that May the 24th, 1931, that day. Patsy proceeded to recall a humorous incident with teammate Dad O'Neill, who won an All-Ireland with Lowe's in 1957. Playing the game again, Kerry. We called into Limerick in the hotel there for a meal. And in the dining room, at the other end, there was a man, just, he looked like a big man, army major, but he had a big Alsatian dog sitting beside him, which, with the leads tied onto it, and there was cheer. And next thing, meow, meow, then I'm going to meow. The bloody dog took off and took the chair with <laughs> We had, <laughs> we had to, to, to get out as quick as we could. Patsy also acknowledged the part played by McHill Road and its residents uh, to jail life in Castlebar. But the people of McHill Road definitely were in the heart of the, of the row. They couldn't be nicer, even to the day. When I was started playing football, I came, I was, when I was living in Spencer Street, I walked to McHill Park. I knew every house from the far below corner up to here, up to the end. The key was sticking in every door. If the people were outside, you knew them by their first name. They had great appreciation and great welcome for anyone playing football. Castlebar Mitchells provides top-class facilities for its members and the community. With an active volunteer base, it boasts 446 members. It caters for 140 under-12 players. It has three under-14 teams, one under-16 team, one minor team with 29 minor footballers registered. It has three adult football teams, one at senior level, one at junior A and one at junior B. And in total, it has 70 adult players. Castlebar Mitchells has also a hurling club with big playing numbers. Its ladies football team boasts huge numbers and the girls use the facilities of Castle Bar for their games. The volunteer base is very large and it's particularly noticeable on the day of big matches. On Sportlawn acts as a centre for racquetball, basketball and indoor football. The schools, that's St Gerald's, Dab College and St Joseph's use it as a base and an outlet for many of their games. And Sportland also acts as a social centre in that it hosts a weekly bingo session and links into the wider community. The St Patrick's Day Parade is a massive social event in the town and this year the club was particularly prominent in that parade.
The Mitchells doesn't exclusively concentrate on the promotion of Gaelic games. Cultural activities like Irish music and dancing play a huge part in club life. This year's Ray Prendergast tournament was contested by Ballina Stevenites, Brafey, Ballantubber and Castlebar Mitchells. The tournament has great significance in the club as it commemorates the memory of Ray, one of the famous Prendergast clan from Ballantubber, who contributed so much to the club and county when he moved to Castlebar in the 1960s. Keep going, Joe. Keep going, Joe. Keep going, Joe. Keep going. 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 A hard aspect, any only, a wild club, the club in the Mistelli, a carja, a Kalini, a Wokali. But what long falls if we let a curve an Octoron, a Gasfi, Clana, McDonald, Monley, a Gas McMenamin, Quig or Glob Tronona? This is indeed a very historic occasion for the club. The club was established on the 11th of December. 1885. That's four generations ago. Many people have gone before us and have left an indelible mark, not only in the club and in the GA, but in the town of Castlebar and in Mayo, and in particular on football in, in Mayo. We, on an occasion like this, we thank and we appreciate <laughs> the huge effort that so many people that went before us have done over the years to make the club what it is today. And I hope that it will be our legacy that we would leave the club to the next generation in a better state. Uh, and I came to the GS Pavalum, a week as hard and common as I could have hooked you to Chapter and Chan Upton. I guess took him Corrado so much free, but I never saw that identical with three. They quickly feel like it was a kid. Um, it's a tremendous pleasure to be here tonight. 
and to heartily congratulate the club on celebrating its 125th birthday. I don't think too many of us will achieve it. So it shows you in a special way the longevity of the club and what's been achieved over 125 years. Um, I'm sure your founding fathers would have great difficulty in coming to terms with the wonderful facilities that are here now and the tremendous work that's been carried on since they came up with the idea of forming a club here and moving it forward. Little did they think that it would last and go on to be 125 years of age and they'd be celebrating this, this evening in such wonderful weather. Um, it's a remarkable achievement in itself and it shows the strength and the commitment of our of families throughout generations of their commitment to not alone to the GA but to the community and to the well-being and pastime of, of sport for young people which is so important. Archbishop Neary and the Reverend Rogers officially dedicated the pitches to the memories of Jerry MacDonald and Josie Munley and a function room was dedicated to the memory of Martin McMenamin. My earliest memory in primary school would be when in Baby Room in 1951, the Castlebar Mitchells members of the victorious All Ireland champions brought in the Sam Maguire to Baby Room. <clears throat> I know that over 125 years, this club has contributed so much to the town of Castlebar and the county of Mayo and to all lovers of Gaelic games. On the day, a wide range of activities were organised for boys and girls of all ages in both hurling and football. Facilities were also provided for the amusement and, and entertainment of families. Music was provided by the Castle Bar Town Band and Christy Cooney presented medals to the underage participants. concluded with the final of the Ray Prendergast tournament between Castlebar, Mitchells and Ballantubber, which as it happened was a dress rehearsal for the county final.
Borden Oak is entrusted with encouraging children to participate in Gaelic games, irrespective of their class, colour or creed. It is also entrusted with the responsibility of identifying and developing talent within the club and bringing this through to adult level. One of the highlights in underage football is the Mitchells' participation in Fela Pell. The under-21 team, after a successful campaign, rounded off their year with a resounding win over Ballantubber in the county final. Unfortunately, at senior level, the county final between the same clubs had a different result.
Hand up, Jason. Stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. Black guy, black guy. Keep your back to the wind. Yeah. Keep your back to the wind. Yeah. Okay. Castlebar Town Council voted to award a civic reception to Castlebar Mitchells to mark the 125th anniversary of its foundation. It was held in the Linen Hall Centre on December the 11, 2010, to coincide with the same date and location of the foundation of the club. The event was introduced by the acting town clerk, Nora Coyne. It is very fitting that we were here at this historic building, the Town Hall, for this occasion. It was on this very day, 125 year, years ago, in this exact building, that the Caspar Mitchells took their first tentative steps. In that time, they have given us heroes to look up to. They have get, given us success to admire. And most crucially of all, they have given us enjoyment both on and off the field. Um, tonight is a special occasion, not alone for the Mitchells, but indeed for your council and for <coughs> the community at large here within Castle Bar. Uh, because I think it goes without saying, <clears throat> Not alone here in Castle Bar, but throughout the length and breadth of the country, that the impact of Cumberloo Class Grail has made throughout its history of 126 years has been truly immense. Um, to be 125 years of age is quite staggering, and none of us, I'm sure, will ever have the opportunity of meeting that. Even though we might desire to, and some others might desire that we wouldn't. Uh, to be founded in this building truly is truly remarkable that you're back to the exact day and the exact location when the club was formed. 125 years ago. So today is historic, really, really historic, and it's something to be proud of, extremely proud of as a club, um, and that it's extremely wonderful that you as a council mayor would honour the club by having a civic reception and unveiling a plaque today. 
in memory of the founding fathers, but a diverse contribution that the club has made to Castlebar and to its community during that period of time. I've no doubt that today's event and the events this evening will give Castlebar Mitchells an unbelievable lift. <coughs> the sad challenges that it's had to face this year, very sad challenges, and something that I'm sure in some ways will strengthen the club um, to strive forward in the memory of the great people that have gone before you, not alone this year, but over the past 125 years that have made this club what it is today. I suppose we're here really, I suppose, to pay tribute to and to commemorate <coughs> those founder members of the club, those pioneers that I suppose they had the vision to set up a, a unit of the association here in this very building 125 years ago. And I suppose when we look back and look at our own contribution, I would sincerely hope that the club and all those that wear the club's jersey or are members of the club, or indeed in particular the officers of the club, that they do justice to the vision that those uh, founder members had <coughs> 125 years ago. I think, and I, we, we said a year ago, that it was our aspiration as a club to be not only the premier sporting organisation in this town, but also in this county and in this country. And our vision is to be one of the best. And everything we do at the club, we strive to do, to do it better. We are particularly proud of our association with and our role and our integration into this community here in Castle Bear. We are particularly proud of all the players and all the members of the club and all those that wear the jersey with pride at underage level right up to senior football. So Michael, I'd like to uh, present the, the official um, seal of, of civil reception and I'll just read out what it says and this is, comes from the, the members of, of Castle Bar Town Council. The Mayor and members of Castle Bar Town Council are pleased to accord a civic reception to Castlebar Mitchell's GA Club on the occasion of its 125th anniversary. Castlebar Mitchell's is the oldest GA Club in the county with a proud history. We acknowledge that your club has always been to the forefront of the GA MAO. I'd like to uh, make a small presentation to the president of the GA, Christy Cooney, as well. It's, a, it's the story of MAO, very interesting book, and I'd like to present to you, Christy, and thank you for coming down here tonight. It's Christy Cooney unveiled a plaque to commemorate this historic event. <laughs> Later in on Sportlon, he unveiled another plaque to mark this auspicious occasion. <laughs> The McGowan name is one that will always be fondly associated with Castlebar Mitchells. John Joe, one of three brothers who made huge contributions to the Mitchells in the 30s, 40s and 50s, recalled some of his memories in a wide-ranging interview with Jerry Henry. He lucidly remembered playing against Roscommon in the 1944 Connacht final. They, they asked me to do three, three weeks training in Bellinair for the, the, the match that I remember was the one against Roscommon. And I tell you now, in a moment, when that, that was, that was in 1944, 1944. And me over playing, as I say, uh, Roscommon. And of course, Roscommon went on to win the All Ireland final, you know, right. in '44. And I, I, I remember how it was with me. I had given three, three weeks of training. Do you know, for, for that match, yes. do you know? And uh, uh, I remember now that uh, I had done a sheer running beforehand, a sheer like, but uh, it was a small sheer. But in that three weeks, 
I improved in the running because I can actually tell you an incident of in the middle of the of the training there was a, a hundred yard sprint in Ballinay and it was uh, there was a, a man that died now General Duffy General Duffy hundred yards I think it was General Duffy and they the, the came it was a, a, a rather it came from different parts and the, the man that won it was he had won the the the, the army hundred yards in in the, at lawn and i i was second but there was a dispute as regards whether we had tied or whether we hadn't yeah. and he he it went to a vote as far as I remember anyway but there was people coming even up to me saying well you know you you you, you uh, what you call him you did he should anyway do you know he recalled many of the names who established the Mitchells as the prime club in the county he Paddy is five years younger than myself do you know all but a couple of months, do you know, that he, he wasn't on that time, do you know? And who was in charge of the Mitchells? Who was, who were the, who was in charge of the team? Who, was, who were the officers of the club? Who would be in charge? Who was the ones that brought you to the matches? And and bring us to the... Oh, well, of course, Jerry was there now in a big way. Jerry... MacDonald. MacDonald, yeah. And, like, Josie, I'd say it. Yes. It it have a, a lot to do with it, you know. Kind of. It was nineteen thirty, and at that time, there was like playing on, on the Mayo were playing Dublin in the yes. final, yes. you know, and there was I put my brother now because he's dumb. Me me brother and Tosh. 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 Yeah. And then there was Connie Gannon. Yes. He was playing, and there was Pam McGough. Yes. That's that's three, three. three. Wait now for a minute. John Burke. John Burke is as far as I'm nearly certain was captain of that Kesselbear Mitchell minor team, and then there was another fella, Tommy Cresham. That was as far as I know at Soap. Yeah, what about Paddy so, Quinn? Was he playing? Paddy Quinn was... No, no, Paddy, Paddy, Paddy Quinn... As far as I remember Paddy Quinn telling me one time that he was from out... He was out... out you know, out, yeah, out, Paddy, outside, outside Paddy the... Paddy Hayen country. Yeah, that's right. And uh, he played with the college the fine, he was in the, the, his final year, leaving search year, in 1940. It was clear that in listening to John Joe that the Town League played a huge role in developing and sustaining interest in football in Castlebar. And as it was, Jerry McDonnell had started a, a league and there was at least eight or nine teams in the league. Town league. N town league, but yeah. it spread from the town. Ballantubber had a, a, a team, and Bracey had a team, and uh, uh, Islandy had a team. Do you know? Yes. So, and the bacon factory, or no, yes, they had a team, and the hack factory, and actually Paddy, my brother, and myself, we had to come in with the college because of the, the, the June for the, what you call them. Yes. And the final, I, I, I go on to say that when it came to the final, the, the two teams that were the highest in the, in the marks was the, the head factory and, and the college. And we had to play them in McKeel Park. And who won that game? Well, they won it by a matter of uh, about two points, I think. 
and Henry Kinney. Some of them say that it was his last game as full back and Tom Burke was playing in goal. Right. Now, and that made the, that a memorable game. He recalled the origin and development of McHale Park. I remember, yeah, I was out with my first cousin, Jimmy Deftley, yes. when I was a youngish fella. And I'd say, oh, what did I say? I'd, I'd put an age on that. And Jimmy showed me, that we went out to the, to the factory, buying our meat, yes. to the baking factory. And he brought me down to the end of the baking factory and he put me, kind of helped me to stand up. And he said, you can see that field over there. Well, they're going to take that over as a park for football, do you know? And if I could know, like, that, I, I'd say that would be, that would be in about 19, like 30, that's a guess, yes. like, that I'd say around about 1930, might be 29 to 30. Uh, where were the matches played at that stage? Where did Mitchells play their matches at, at before they had McHale Park? Well, I, I, I don't think that they had a prominent place, except I saw a, a match and some of the footballers, like very early, said the gas hues from our street was playing, and that was in the field green. The, 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 the built Mikhail Park, you know, but the, the McHale houses, yes. the full way up from the station road, right down there to, you know, where yeah. we went at 19, yes. number 80. Yes. And then they started above at one again. And they came down to, I think it's, it's uh, 116, uh, yes. 116. I think that's, that's all that's in it. That's right. But however, Taken above at the, at the Spencer uh, Station Road, the houses went right down along there, everything was fine until they came down there and it was round the entrance to the, to the McHale Park that after the houses were built, I think it was three blocks four the head in the blocks and the, the three of them started to sag, you know. So I know that the, a, a department inspector was brought down and he more or less gave a decision that uh, the three of them would have to be taken down and rebuilt because of the fact that it was um, the, 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 the um, uh, turf, turf bog, the bog, the bog was the trouble and they were so tilted. This DVD has provided some snapshots of the life and times of Castlebar Mitchells over the last 125 years. It has served as a reminder of the club's history and of the people who contributed so much to its growth and fame. May the next 125 years see the Mitchells prosper and leave its mark on the GAA in the county. <laughs>